Hello and welcome back to Impulse Audio. Thanks for joining me today. We're going to talk about diffraction. How we're going to do this is right now I'm in the middle of my Chiari build. Uh, so I've built these boxes and I'm ready to router in the drivers. And the first I was going to do is the tweeter, which is this little three quarter inch Chiari tweeter. I'm interested in this because I don't use three quarter inch uh, tweeters very often. And I was looking at the, the speaker baffle I have, wondering where I should mount this tweeter so that I get the best diffraction response possible. Too many equidistant edges and you compound diffraction and you create some problems and it can be hard to work with. But I was thinking about it, where should I put this tweeter, you know, should it just go in the middle like here somewhere, offset maybe, maybe I offset the mid as well. And I actually came up with an idea that might work something that could really limit diffraction. So I went ahead and built myself a template so that I can mount this tweeter. I had to do this anyways because it's truncated. That's the other interesting thing about this tweeter. Not only is it small, but it's truncated. I got to thinking, maybe the center to edge distance is so small that we can push the diffraction behavior way up into the upper frequencies and so I looked into it and did some quick math, and it turns out, yes, if we mount this tweeter very close to the upper baffle, upper edge of the baffle, we get diffraction at about 8,500, 9,000 hertz. That is way up there. And even for a three quarter inch tweeter, the tweeter is starting to become directional. So if it's directional, you're not gonna get as much baffle edge diffraction. Our hearing also is not as sensitive up at 9,000 hertz. So I thought, well, maybe that would work. Whereas a larger inch and an eighth tweeter, which I normally use, you wouldn't be able to do this so easily. So then I started to wonder, well, you know, should I offset it at the top edge or should I leave it centered? And that brought me to the next thing about this tweeter is that being a three quarter inch, I can't cross very low. It just won't have the surface area to handle uh, say 1500 hertz crossover or even 2000 hertz it's probably going to have to cross around 3000 hertz so this baffle being that it has a 10 inch woofer in it is fairly wide at around 12 inches and i thought if i leave the tweeter centered let's look at the distance between the tweeter and the edge of the baffle if we leave it centered that's about six inches obviously and the primary baffle edge diffraction occurs at about 2200 or 2300 hertz, somewhere in around there. So that puts the diffraction off of this edge into the stop band of the tweeter. So today I wanna to see if this idea is gonna work. So I've built this test baffle before I route her into my good speakers here. And we're gonna measure it. And over here, I have an IEC baffle or a facsimile of an IEC baffle. It's fairly large. Uh, I can measure in a way that we're not going to get any baffle edge diffraction. And we can see what the tweeter looks like in its natural state without any diffraction and compare it to the test baffle. Yes, I'll extend it to better match what we have going on here. Once I know what the IEC baffle response looks like, I can directly compare it to this and see exactly what the diffraction is doing. And if my theory is correct, I can go ahead and router them into my actual speaker and carry on with the project. If I'm incorrect and we have major baffle edge diffraction problems, I can make a new test baffle, try it offset or further down or something and come up with a new theory. So join me as I measure our IEC baffle next and then the test baffle and I'll come back and talk about what I'm seeing and what I think of the results. Okay, so here is my infinite baffle, IEC baffle, whatever you wanna call it. It's not a perfect baffle. It's about three feet wide, so it's enough for a tweeter. I've got the microphone 24 inches away from the tweeter. I've got OmniMic up and running, and I'm now just gonna take an on-axis sweep and see what we get. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, right off the bat, there's quite a bit to like here. Surprisingly, this thing digs down to 1200 hertz or so, and it's only a three quarter inch tweeter. Now, keep in mind, I should stay, say right off the bat, 
These are not SPL correct measurements. I have not yet calibrated my measurement system for SPL. So these are not 2.8 volt at one meter SPL correct. But it does dig down deep. This could be because it has a small rear chamber. Um, that might be why we're getting a little bit of a bump there at 1500 hertz. It's got a very flat response. It should be easy to work with. What I don't like is the top octave has a little bit of a dip followed by a little bit of a peak. This could be a sign of breakup, which on a three quarter inch dome tweeter is surprising because usually you would see that pushed up into the 20,000 plus Hertz range. And you wouldn't see this kind of behavior except for maybe on like a 1.4 inch compression driver or something like that. Now it's not completely out of control like a compression driver, but it does make you wonder. All that said, I need to do actual testing on this tweeter. This is just a preliminary, hmm, what do we have here? I'll just say again, this isn't meant to be a review of the tweeter itself yet because that's coming, but I did wanna quickly overlay the manufacturer's graph against my results, and I think I'm getting better results. I see a lot of similarities, but the dip followed by a peak in the top octave, theirs is more pronounced and lower in frequency, Overall, I would say I have a better result. So otherwise, it seems to match. Things are looking good. I'm pretty happy so far. Okay, so now I've got the tweeter put into the test baffle, and I've just propped it up on top of my uh, speaker cabinet to extend that baffle down. And we have OmniMic up and running, so let's get a test of what things look like in the test baffle. And there we go. This measurement is actually the point of the video. So uh, I'll overlay the graph soon, but I'm not seeing much of a difference from what we just looked at. We have the same top octave kind of breakup looking thing going on. We have the same low end 1500 Hertz bump. Actually, it looks like it's maybe not even as significant. You can see we have about one and a half dB variation and this is before we do any filtering. This is the driver in its raw state from about a typical 2500 hertz crossover and down. Now again, that's not including the top octave. Things get a little haywire there. So overall, this is looking really good on this baffle. I wasn't sure what to expect, but it seems like things are working. Even though the driver is very close to that sharp top edge, I don't see any aberrations or problems here that I need to be worried about and certainly nothing that's making me think time to try another test baffle. Here the two graphs are overlaid. Black is the uh, infinite baffle and red is the actual speaker baffle or the test baffle. And you can see there's very little variation between the two. The diffraction I was expecting in and around 2000 Hertz, 2200 Hertz is barely perceptible. There's a little something going on at four kilohertz. The number one concern I had was that top edge in the 8,500 Hertz range. And we do see a difference there. It's actually much lower Q, meaning broadband, and less peaky than I expected. I expected a, a peak. And what we got was actually a slight dip, about one and a half dB maybe at the most. So this is very usable. I've got no problem with this baffle at all. I'm very happy to proceed because there's very little diffraction to worry about, which was my plan all along. Ultimately, I was satisfied enough with the results that I went ahead and routed all the driver holes into my speaker cabinets. Obviously, I haven't gone ahead and sanded the cabinets and got them all prepared for finish. I don't even know if I'm gonna be applying a finish to these in time, but you can see what I did, it's a little unconventional. Some people might even think it looks funny, but these are now ready to install drivers and get a full set of measurements and start listening. So I'm very excited. This is like the best part of speaker design for me. This is my favorite part. I hope you all enjoyed this video and you stick around for more videos about the speaker design and I'll keep you updated. As a YouTuber, I suppose I'm supposed to tell you that if you enjoyed this content, please like, subscribe and comment below. In all seriousness, do comment below because I think it's interesting to hear you guys' feedback on what you'd like to see and maybe some suggestions that I could use in this speaker project or anything like that. Thanks for watching.